G'day fixers and welcome back to another scrap wood workshop build. Today I need to solve a problem. Everything needs a home and these chisels and my new rasp and files do not have one. So that space right there is going to house them in the near future using this pile of steaming crap. This stuff has, except for the perspex, cost me nothing. And I just want to show you that you can keep building nice-ish looking stuff using junk. First thing to mention is this little thing, the Fit Finder by Microjig. It's a new tool that Timbercon were kind enough to send out to me to try. I'm not going to review it per se, more so I'm going to use it throughout this project in a variety of different ways. And here's the first one. I want rebates halfway through this plywood and usually I would be doing this sort of procedure, getting the gauge to measure, then using my little depth finder to try and set the bit. This thing, you can drop down onto your workpiece and that little tab coming out the side is now exactly half what the thickness of your workpiece was. Particularly with this recycled plywood and the other recycled bits of junk I'm using, they're all over the shop. So this tool should be very handy. Setting the depth was very easy. And then I could go over to the router table and in a couple of passes, create my rebates. Not just for the router table, but also for the palm router using the edge guide as well. But this is what not to do. Yes, I set it exactly to halfway, but no, I shouldn't be cutting that much with a little trim router. And I nearly started a fire. The second time around, this dado was done correctly in two passes to much nicer effect. Now those bits of ply were some random scrap I had lying around, but this piece I know exactly where it came from. It was part of my very first workbench, most of which has been used in other projects, but this final offcut will now become the shelf in the middle of my hand tool cabinet. Number five jack plane, just cleaning that up to get it fitting correctly into the dado, and then a wee quick sand with Kevin the random orbital sander. Speaking of channel supporters whose names I have given two tools, Presto the nail gun comes out for a bit of tacka tacka action. Glue and brad nails will hold my frame together. This is a good way to get rid of long skinny bits, those off cuts which are really hard to use in situations where you don't need the exact width, smack two of them together. And that little bit of yellow showing through will always remind me of my first workbench. Now we need to rebate out the back of the frame. Keep note here that it looks like I'm going the wrong direction, but I'm now inside a box. So you actually have to come from the other side that you would normally route. However, my router table was not able to get deep enough. So I had to switch to the palm router with a little fence clamped onto the side to get the depth needed for that back panel to fit. I think some of this plywood got wet at one stage and it started to lift the top layer, but a bit of glue and clamp that overnight hides that sin. So one of the things I love about workshop projects is you really don't have to be too precious about things like grain direction on your plywood. I've got this back panel, which I need. I've got this really odd shaped piece of 12 millimeter marine ply, which I want to use. It's not big enough in either L-shaped dimension to work as a piece. I can trim off this piece. I'm gonna have the plies going different ways, but honestly, is it worth getting a new sheet of 12 millimeter ply when I have this just because the back of my cabinet is gonna be cross-grained? No. So I rounded over the corners so it would fit within the rebate that we cut earlier, but that was still not quite deep enough to take my next bit of scrap wood, which came off my very first project, the pegboard that I built for my workshop a long time ago. It's long since been pulled apart and turned into cleats, but those cleats need to be rebated in. So we quickly pulled out the trim router to do that. Then I could tack a tacker with Presto the back into place and use the fit finder as a marking gauge. Taking half of my cleat, which is where I want my screws to go, I can draw a line and sink them home. Now the cabinet won't hang proud of the wall. Some much fresher bed slats, which I picked up off the side of the road out the front of my house, are going to make the shaker style door for my cabinet. Okay, this is something I was super interested in because obviously the Fit Finder is pretty much ideal for table saws and I don't have one. I'm gonna do my half laps for the door on the miter saw using the depth stop. 
And I was wondering if the Fit Finder can set that depth for me. It's tricky, it's obviously not ideal, it's not really set for this, but I reckon that's pretty good. I can line it up behind here, I can see a tooth. We'll obviously do our regular test cut and hopefully that half lap on the trenching will work. And it did. Now there's a little bit of bounce and play in Midasaurs, so it's not ideal, but I only had to do one test cut and adjustment instead of three or four like I normally would to do this procedure. As the bed slats were already rounded over, I decided to rather than hide that, accentuate it by rounding over the joining face. Which was easily achieved with my little block plane and a quick bit of sanding. Now I screwed those panels together. I'm not going to glue them because I'm using the perspex in the middle and I need to be able to pull it apart to get that in. Watching Cole from Gifkin's Jig has shown me the value of a slot cutter which conveniently was exactly the same thickness as my Perspex. So the Fit Finder once again found the halfway point to cut that groove, and then to match the other things in the workshop, I've put a nice chamfer all the things on the top and bottom. The hinges I'm using were not exactly scrap, but I did pick them up out of the bargain basement bin at Bunnings, so that three times fast, and decided to go old school recessing them in. And actually got to break out the Vix bits for a change. Don't use them often, but they're handy when I need them. And if this looks like it went together far too easily, you're right. That door did not actually close terribly flush or even, and I had to go back and replug the holes with some chopsticks. But the magic of filming, you don't have to watch that. Mind you, it was the magic of filming which made me rush to do the error in the first place. The smallest piece of scrap wood, being a bit of dowel offcut, again picked up out of a dumpster would act as the handle for my door and a little 10mm magnet will hold it closed. Quick tip, using a brad point bit will give you a flat bottom which is much better than a standard drill bit when installing magnets. Second quick tip, always check your polarity so your door doesn't end up being bounced away. Put the magnet down and mark it with an X. That's the face to glue. What are we up to? Scrap wood 8. Nope, 9. This piece of cedar I pulled out of my wardrobe in the study when I did a renovation on the sliding doors on that and nearly destroyed my blade because I cut through a few brads which I didn't see which I now have to remove. It is going to form the magnetic tool holder for my chisels, files and my rasp, chamfer all the things, and I've got some rare earth magnets to hold those in place which I'm just going to recess in slightly deeper than the width of the magnet so that the tools only ever touch the wood, they won't hit the metal because these things are strong but very brittle. And we'll just see a glue those in place. Another piece of cedar, this time taken off a window which we pulled out of the building during some repair work, is going to form the lower tool holder. This is where a drill press really shines. I had a similar version of this earlier in my other tool cabinet, but it was a bit wonky because I eyeballed the drill holes. This one looks much nicer, and mounting it with some little stepway blocks, just an offcut of the offcut. I decided to get extra fancy and put some contrasting plugs in there. Ooh, that's a bonus bit of scrap wood. That Merbo is off my parents' house when I renovated the veranda. Those step blocks also serve the function of making the handles not clash with the tools stored above it. And you could almost stop here, in fact I decided to mount the thing to the wall now just to get it out of the way while I do the final stages, but to keep the dust off things I wanted to make sure I had that door and also install a drawer below. Let's load her up. Moving on to the drawer, making it to match my apothecary style cabinet which had 54 of the buggers in there. Luckily today I'm only making the one, but it will be from the 6mm MDF which I bought for that project. Don't buy wood terribly often but I needed so much of it I had to get two sheets. And these little bits will continue to be useful in this new project. Drawers made exactly the same way as I did previously. Fit finder to find the halfway of the 6mm, very small, it's only an eighth of an inch. Rebate, glue and brad nail construction.
I decided to put a middle divider in there just to give it some strength and rigidity. Use the hand plane to make sure everything fit flush and lovely, and then put the files that I made the draw for in and realize that that divider makes them not fit in the case. Nah, I'll sort that out later. The draw face is a dumped kitchen bench top. 18mm Melamine MDF, which I picked up again from the front of my building. Gold mine out there. CA glue holds it on temporarily. And then here's a nifty trick. I pre-drilled the holes before I assembled things, but getting the screw in was a bit of a bugger. And I figured out that those little detachable Phillips head screwdrivers actually fit in a quarter inch socket bit. And that allowed me to get into the tight space. Paint and prime, then remove the screws. And I can knock the door apart to fit in the clear perspex. Chopper Chris comes out again. You can cut perspex with your regular circular saw. This one still had the shielding on it, which helps protect the cut. If you are cutting it without the paper shielding, use some blue tape. That'll stop you getting chips along the edge. Quick test fit to make sure the perspex would go in neatly. Then I'll pull it apart again for painting. I'm running low on workshop blue, but enough to finish this project. And then did one final assembly, screwing it back together once the paint had dried. I'd like to give a massive thanks to Tim from Turgworks who put the uh, scrap wood build off on again this year and this is my entry to that challenge. Go and check it out on his Instagram. I really enjoyed the process of turning this digital sketch up into reality and I enjoyed using the Fit Finder from Microjig supplied to me by Timbercon. Thanks guys for that too. It will be a handy addition to the workspace. I hope you guys enjoyed this project and I will see you on the next one.